everybody. Happy Sunday. So you're going to notice some different things behind my head here. I'm at my, I'm at dad's house sitting in the family room. So it's, I, hopefully it, it's bright enough and everything that everybody can see. Let me get to my comments here. This second, I got to turn a couple things off. Let's turn this off and find the comments. Hi everybody. <laughs> and, um, uh, I, you can hear me okay. I got internet and I have TV in my bedroom. We, we drilled a hole through the floor today and put TV in my bedroom. So I have, I have cable. So it's cool. So yeah, so you're going to notice things look a little different behind me. Um, I'm sitting kind of on the, on the North end of the, or I'm sorry, the South end of the family room here. And, uh, Dad's here with me to watch, so we will. I will uh, put him on the camera here in a minute. So, you've been sewing all day. Oh, Colleen, hi, Colleen. Yeah, I have too. I'll have to show you what I've been doing. So, um, this is what we're gonna make tonight. Okay, so this is what we're gonna make tonight is the little topsy turvy witch with the little the, hers her little skirt, and she's got her legs sticking out of the cauldron there. So we're gonna make this. But I all and I finished up my pillow last night I found my glue gun so I got my or from last week so um I got to uh, put the little flower on and here's my little fringed little fringed um pillow you know I might need to well I think it'll be okay because there's a glare on a with a light but in a minute I'll be taking it down so put on the other camera it'll be fine all right so then here's my little pillow from last week and then today I'm getting ready to do the pillows this is the ones for november okay so this is the first one i did this today and i'll make a video remember these are going to be a video um that since we're going to do the quilt in november these will both be videos so here's the first one i got this one done today so i'll probably um do a video maybe in the next maybe tomorrow even so oh mary and bright is that uh that must be denise yep denise isn't that cool? It's cool. So this is the this is the first one in the November little November pillows. So they're so cute. They have like a little burlap kind of a ribbon on there. So so anyway, that's what I've been doing today. And I got to drill a hole through the floor today to make put cable in. <laughs> so that was pretty fun. Okay. So everybody's been ex wanting to know how Dad's doing. He's doing very well. He's sitting right next to me. So if you give me a second before we start. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on and he can wave to everybody. He's sitting right in front of me. So just a second, dad, I got to turn the camera over here. So he's sitting on the couch in front of me. So here he is and he can wave. And then let me get the audio changed. All right. Got to find the right camera. Okay. Wave dad. <laughs> so he's sitting here and right in front of me watching watching what I'm doing because he's never seen this before. So I thought it would be really cool so that he could see this. Okay, so I'm going to bring this down. I know there's a little glare there, but it'll be better once I get the camera down on the on the sewing machine here. So, all right. Second. Okay. So tonight is the topsy-turvy. Everybody's saying hi. <laughs> I've got lots of, lots of, lots of people saying hi to you. He's laughing. <laughs> All right. So so we're going to start with this tonight. The first thing we're going to do, we need to do a little prep, okay, to start out with. And um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to, um, there's a piece of that um, polka dot, polka dot, um, what do they call it? Polka dot uh, glitter vinyl, okay? So this is a piece of that, you know, like adhesive, or it's the like the uh, iron-on glitter vinyl, okay? So what you do first is there's a piece of orange fabric and a piece of that, <laughs> and you need to iron it on, okay? So you need to iron those together. So, so that's now one piece, and that's going to be an applique. So that's for her feet, okay? And then the other thing you need to do is put, ladies over here, you're going to put, um though you're going to put a piece of shape flex that's step number two here you're going to put a piece of shape flex on the back of your main fabric so this is my main fabric here this gray 
Okay, I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. Okay, so here's the gray, and there's a piece of shape flex on the back of this. Okay, then you also need to make her little skirt, and her little skirt is made out of that glitter dot organza. And re when we get to this point, everybody, remind me to get the um, please remind me to get this put on right side up. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, um, what you need to do is you need to gather it up from the side to side. So I think it's around, I don't know, it's around 10 or 12 inches long. It tells you in the instructions at the beginning. Let's see what it's at here. I don't remember. Purple glitter dot organza. Let's see. Uh, 10 inches. So three by 10. Okay. And then you're just going to gather it up so that the gather measures about two inches across the top there. Okay. So that's what I did is I just took a needle and thread and just gathered it by hand and then gathered it up so that it's about two inches across the top. So it tells you that in these instructions. That's part number two. Okay. And then part number three is to hoop the, the, fabric. So I did use different stabilizers. So it tells you to use cutaway. I use tearaway. And I hoop the same way that I normally do. I took my piece of fabric with the shape flex on the back. And then I turned it over and I took my fabric glue stick. I've got that right here. So I took my fabric glue stick and I stuck, put fabric glue stick on the back of the fabric. And then I kind of eyeballed on my stabilizer and stuck it down and then I just hooped it. So I didn't do all, you know, they always tell you to do all those centering and the lines and all that. And I just eyeball it. So I've got this glued down to my stabilizer and it's in an eight by eight hoop. So there's two versions of this little piece. If you don't have an eight by eight hoop, um, you can do this, um, if you don't have an eight by eight hoop, you can do this in two five by seven hoopings, I believe. So for those of you who have smaller machines, you'll have to do it in two hoopings. OK, so we're going to do the eight by eight version tonight all in one hoop. OK, so this is what I've got in here is an eight by eight. All right. So, so everybody got those little prep things. Oh, and the other thing we need to do here is we got a little more glitter vinyl that we're going to use for the cauldron. So you got to remember, you got to take that plastic cover sheet off here. Let me get that off of here. I always have a hard time with that. Okay. So here's the plastic cover sheet. So we're going to use this narrower one first. So we'll do that one first. So you always have to remove that. Okay. And I did the same thing when I did the glitter dot. You know, I took the plastic <laughs> off first and then I ironed the glitter dot to the fabric. All right. That's going to be your shoes. Okay. So step number one, I'm, I picked the um, version that's eight by eight. So I did the one that's all in one hooping. And I have black thread in the um, my needle and I have bobbin thread in the bobbin. And I'm going to, um, the first step in the instructions is the cauldron. So we're going to place a placement line for the cauldron. So that's the first thing I'm going to stitch out here. So this is step number one. So we're working on that and then we're going to do the applique so we're going to start out with some applique here we're going to use our first piece of glitter vinyl this is the cauldron okay we're going to lay this down and i don't normally um tape it you can tape it if you want i'm just going to hold it step number two is going to be the um tap down line Get my glasses here so I can see what I'm doing when I go to trim this. So is the light okay, everybody? Can you see okay? There's a little bit more of a shadow, I noticed, but I don't have any light behind me. All right. So there's our tack down line. And now we're going to trim. Let me pull this out so I can trim. I'm going to trim off the top of the cauldron here. So we're going to go across here. 
and you're going to trim all the way around. This is going to have a cover stitch on it, so this is not raw edge applique. Trim this. This was so cute. I had so much fun making this one. All right, so there's, I, and I even had to do it. This is the third time because Jan, this is your, everybody's job is to make sure I put the skirt on right side up, okay? Because I've made my skirt upside down. All right, so, but the one instruction that I want you to really pay attention to right now, on number 10, it says, trim the glitter close to the stitch line. It says, do not iron the glitter at this time. So they don't have you iron the glitter down. Okay, so that's different than normal. Normally we iron this down now with the pressing cloth, but we're not going to do that this time. Okay, so let's put this back in. Turn the page. Anybody got any questions so far? Okay, it says change the thread to the desired color, stitch the bubbles and potion placement lines. So now the next thing is going to be the little bubbles. And that's going to be done with iridescent mylar. So I am actually going to change the thread. I think I've got it as lime green. There was only about three colors in this. All right, lime green. So this is going to be the placement line so we know where the little bubbles are going to go. And we're going to lay our mylar down on that. And this is iridescent mylar. Okay, so here we go. And there's going to be some down here too. It's like the cauld in the cauldron. All right, so hopefully I got enough iridescent mylar here. Let's see if I can get the. I've got big pieces. Hopefully that they're big enough. Make the bubbles. But is everybody hearing me okay? The the uh, internet the internet's awesome. There's never been internet at the house here before, so it's been pretty cool. Hopefully, I have enough here. I think I do. If not, we'll improvise. Okay, and there's another. And they kind of just have you do the whole thing at the same time. So I may have to do like a little piece and then move it just because I've only got some scraps here. So I think, I think I've got enough to see here. Yep. So I might have to do some manipulating to make it work. So there's those two. I think that'll work. And then I might have to go up to the top with a, a second piece. So I'm just going to lay this up here like this. This second piece up here. I think we can get it to work. All right. So this stuff here, I often do tape this down because it is kind of scoochy. So I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. So it won't scooch on me, especially since I'm using two pieces. Get a little piece of tape and we'll tape the top one down up there. Because I had some scraps and I knew I could get it out, but I knew I might have to use both of them. Yes, Nance, it, it does. Um, she Somebody asked if it the instructions, the pattern tells you what to buy. Yes. So it's all on the front page. So let me show you. Got my pages upside down. Okay, so on the front page of the instructions right here, it tells you all the materials that you need on this side, and it tells you how to cut them on this side. So it's very clear, okay? And I had just pre-cut everything, okay? So that that's very easy to read. The only thing that I made different is I did not use cutaway stabilizer. I used tearaway stabilizer, okay? All right. So let's see here. The next part is, this is step number four in the machine. And we're going to do the little bubbles and the potion. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. And it's going to do, go over that mylar and it's going to do some, whoops, let's see, 
second here. I think I have to go back. It didn't decided it wasn't going to stitch for me. I've got a big long string hanging there. Just re thread the machine. We'll start again. Sometimes things happen. May have to take the bobbin out too. So we we'll do that so we don't have to do it again. Get my string out of here. Started catching back a little ways. I think I'll just put the thread in also, the bobbin thread, because every now and then, if you if you don't change the opposite thing, you'll it'll always be the thing you didn't think it was. And of course, now I I dropped the bobbin door on the floor as well. Now I gotta find it. I can hear it. All right, there we go. Let's try that again. We're going to back up. I'm going to do the negative positive needle, and I'm going to back up to the beginning of number four. <coughs> See if it's happier now. Oh, there it goes. Okay, we're good this time. going to do a tack down but it's also going to do a little decorative stitch over that mylar to make it look like potion okay make it a little bit closer there make sure i know what's coming up next here I don't have as much room on my table and stuff, so it's harder for me to. <laughs> this table's pretty small. All right. Okay, so then I think it's going to go back and it's going to do the little decorative fill on all of those and then you just remove the mylar you normally don't have to trim it um i just kind of tear it away um sometimes i have to trim a little bit but normally you just kind of tear it so it does this little cute little decorative stitch anybody got any questions so far it's making sense to everybody This is really this is really fun. I, I this is probably my favorite one to make. I had a little trouble with the skirt, like I said. So I've done this, I've sewn this out three times now. And it does take about a half an hour to do this, so hi Carol. People are still coming in. Alright, so it's doing the decorative little decorative cauldron uh what do you want to say potion potion now it's going to do the little polka dots oh julie's late that's okay julie dad went in the other room i think there might be a baseball game on Gonna go around there again and then it's gonna go up and get those two little the little polka dots or the little bubbles. Alright. This one. Yeah, I had just enough of the, the mylar. I just I like to keep my scraps, so keep your scraps. Because then you'd have then you have a little extra in case you need it. You probably you might see a tail pretty soon. She decided she needed to come and visit me. The cat seems to be getting along here well as 
um, pretty well also. <laughs> <laughs> Except that there's not near as much room for her to sit, so she just fell off on the floor. She She's getting along fine, but she's used to my big table. She likes to sit next to me when I'm teaching and sewing. So she... Uh, Yep, the cups are done. I think it's the playoffs now. He's, I don't know what he's going to watch. There was one of the games we looked it up to see what time it started and, and what channel it was on. So, All right. We're just about done. This was about the longest amount of time for sewing. Yes, I am using um, a number 11 embroidery needle. And that's what I use almost all the time. So, yes, the mylar and stuff works fine. The vinyl works fine with that. So I hardly ever change my needle. All right. So we're got just about done. Okay. This is the last little one. This one took a little longer. That decorative stitch always takes a little bit. Okay, so the next step we're gonna the, we're gonna remove the tape here, and we're going to just a second. Oh, got a bug. Gonna remove the tape, and we're gonna tear this mylar off. And you want to be a little careful and just do it slowly, so it just tears right up to the stitches. Okay, so you can just tear the mylar. It works pretty well. Just be careful. And whoops, I guess I'm not even gonna take the tape off. So here's the, the couple of the little bubbles. You can see me hold, let me hold this back just a little bit so you can see it a little better. And get this one. So I'm just tearing it. And I try not to tear it, you know, so that I, I, I can go back and use some more of it. You know, because I'll be able to use some more of this, this piece yet. Just be careful when you're tearing it off not to waste any. Yeah, it looks like the potion, doesn't it? Isn't it cool? I just, I really like the, the I love iridescent mylar. All right, so get this out of the way. We got one more up here to do. Get this little bubble done. All right, so we're just pulling that off. And that's sort of like raw edge applique. You know, they don't do a satin stitch over there or anything. Okay, so there's our potion. What do you think? Isn't that cute? Okay, then the next step is going to be the little witch's legs, and she has little little hose on, so we're going to give her some um, legs here, and I'm going to use my gray, or silver, I think is the color I used. These are the brother colors. So we're going to use a little silver, and then we're going to, the first, the next step, which is step number five, is going to be the um, placement line for the her little legs all right so get that on here find her legs here now in the picture it showed some striped legs and it's really cute but i didn't have any of that fabric so i had this little um uh plaid and it's really cute too so i did mine out of this little plaid fabric The cat's going to sit on the floor now since she fell off on the table. Who asked me if the, oh yeah, you missed dad, but you can go back to the very beginning, Julie, and you'll be able to see him, okay? He'll come on again, he'll come on again next week, I bet. So he went to the living room to watch baseball. <laughs> okay, yours making your stripe. Oh, instead of horizontal, cool. Okay, so now we need to put our, these little pieces on. And I kind of, I don't know, I, I just kind of guessed how they went on because I, I didn't know exactly where the little heck, the little um, plaid would lay. So I just kind of put them on because I figured a witch wouldn't have matching, wouldn't have matching hosiery anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to lay those on. And let's see here, I'm going to pull this back so I don't get it stuck down though. And we're going to stitch the tack down line, which is number six on the machine. Still got my silver in. There's one leg. But I figured a witch wouldn't have matching holes. They, they would be different. 
Okay, and then we'll flip this over here. There we go. And then we'll do another one here. And then I think we're going to trim just like we did before. Yeah, I think the striped fabric that's in the picture here, I think that was part of the, like, um, I was trying to remember. Um, I think it was part of one of the quilts that they may not have that fabric anymore. All right, so we're going to trim these close to the stitches now. I got a bug out here that's just dive bombing me. All right, get this and go around the top here. Let's go all the way around. As you can see, they give you ample fabric. I could have done each leg or both legs with one piece of fabric. <laughs> if I would have cut it in half, but this gave me a little more wiggle room with the so I could get the kind of plaid on there. I love that. I like the plaid. Looks like I've got some strings down here. There we go. And then we're going to do this side, probably not being able to see me too well. All right. Got some strings. Get that out of there. All right. So there's our hose. Okay. This one's a little bit too far away. So we'll get that going there. like that okay so now the next step oh is going to be her feet so that's where we're going to use that piece of um fabric with the um with the glitter vinyl adhered to it so i'm going to put the black in because i want her to have black shoes they're going to be black and orange shoes so i'm going to put the black in Okay, and the first step, next step number seven, then is going to be our placement line for that. So this is the, the fabric that we're going to use now. So this, this black glitter vinyl is adhered to. Yeah, the, the lighting's not too bad. It, it's, it's darker out here, but I have enough lights right around the machine. I think it's okay. It's a little bit dark under the machine but i wonder i might possibly have my light turned down too i might be able to turn it up a little bit i'll have to see if i have it turned down all right so there's our placement lines okay and then you got kind of a long slim piece of fabric here okay then we're going to lay this down Covering both of her shoes. Make sure you get both of the shoes and the heels because she's kind of got heels up there. And then we're going to sew the tack down line. This is number eight on the machine. This is the tack down for her shoes. And I have, for those of you who are kind of new, we do have all of these things like all of these glitter vinyls and everything on the website on shieldsewingcenter.com, okay? So like this is the polka dot glitter vinyl and the mylar, we've got mylar. That's in the neutral, that, that iridescent is in the neutral set. And then the black um, glitter vinyl is on the website too. All right, so it's gonna do the second one. And we're gonna trim that. This was a really fun, this was a really fun little applique. I love it when they put the little, um, the fabric on the back of the heat transfer vinyl. It makes it look so cool. Okay, so now we're going to trim this close to the stitches. So this will take me just a minute. They're a little bit bigger, so give me a minute here. We'll get this trimmed. I just had, I think this is the, yeah, this is the one I cut. Um, I made two of these. So one of them I had a kit for and this one I cut. So this is my fabric. 
I just use scraps, I think. Second, I got the camera cord wrapped around my watch. There we go. All right, so we're going to go around the toe. All right. Here's her heel. Cute shoes. Is that you, Peggy? Peggy, it must be you. Because I don't think anybody else has lost me. And I don't show any, any problems on my end. Must just be you. All right. So let's... Oops, I didn't get quite get this. There we go. All right, that looks good. Let me turn it around this way and we'll get the other shoe. There's your heel. This one's going to have, these are going to have satin stitches on it. Oops. All right. Around here. Takes me longer to trim than anything. I think we're about done trimming. We got a little bit of trimming to do on the cauldron and then we're done. So most of it's just sewing now. All right. Get around here. Yeah, it was exciting to get TV in my bedroom. You know, I've, I've, this is the home I grew up in and I never had TV in my bedroom ever. So this is the first time, and I'm 56 years old, that I've had TV in my bedroom here. I have TV at my, I've always did at my house, but not here. <laughs> so it's so nice to have TV back there. Okay, I think we got it. All right, so we're going to put this back in. And the next step is going to be, there's like a little decorative stitch that goes along the bottom of the cauldron. So I'm going to leave the black in because it's, yeah, black, I think I used, yep. So that's the back of the cauldron. So we'll do that. This is number nine on the machine. Oh, it's the top of the cauldron, sorry. We're gonna put her we're gonna put her skirt on pretty soon here. So remember, help me make sure I get it up up. Am I working at the store? Yes. I am working at the store my normal hours and dad stays here by himself during the day so yes i am i had kind of a weird week this week because we had an extra doctor's appointment and i brought him home but um next week i should be there tuesday through saturday at the store so yes it's been a nice day though today i've just been kind of hanging out and you know hanging out at, at home like i normally do it's just a different home and i've been working and watching tv and you know just kind of my normal things so it's been great haven't even left the house today tomorrow we got to go have our hair cut i got dad an appointment too so we're going to have our hair cut in the morning and then we'll get the groceries and come home so i think he we're going to make meatloaf tomorrow night for supper tomorrow night he wanted meatloaf so see how jan does with meatloaf i have made it before so i think i can do it I'm not the best cook in the world, but. All right, so I think the next step is, let's see. We're gonna be starting the skirt here pretty soon. I wish I could make it go faster, guys, sorry. Um, let's see, step number nine, make sure I know where I'm at. Oh, and then we gotta do the, leg, the legs first. So we're doing some of the satin stitching now. And then, yeah, so we're going to do our legs next. And then we'll do the, um, her little boots. So when, while we, when we get ready to do the legs, I'll, we'll talk a little bit about the sewing part of this so that we're kind of, I'll show you kind of what I've pre-done so you know what we're, what to, to expect coming up here. Jan said she has plenty of time. Well, you know, 
this is always fun. To, it's just fun to do this. I mean, I like to sit and, and talk to everybody, and we just will just work together. Except I got this bug that wants to bother me. You had meatloaf tonight, Peggy. Yeah, I I'm not a very good cook, but I can make meatloaf. <laughs> so we I ordered um, hamburger and and when we pick up the groceries, and then I'll make meatloaf tomorrow, and then we'll have something you know for a couple of nights next week that we can eat too. I like meatloaf. That's one of my favorite meals too. But we had uh, we had we had a steak for lunch today. I made steak and and vegetables. It was good. Right. So I think we're about done with that. And then we're going to put the gray back in to do her legs. It's going to do the satin stitching on the legs. All right. I didn't really know how I could pre-do some of this for you because I wanted you to see the appliques because there was actually quite a few techniques in this one. So I kind of wanted you to be able to watch me do it. So I figured we may just go a little longer tonight. But it's kind of a fun project and it turned out so cute. All right, so here's her legs. We're going to do the satin stitching on the legs. We'll talk a little bit about um, some of the stuff coming up. Oh, yeah, the cat. But, you know, it's like a, it's like a gnat. It's like a little teeny tiny little bug. And she, I don't think she, she finds those as easy. She does get the flies. Denise said that the cat should get the bug. All right, so we're going to do the little legs. So let's talk a little bit while we're going on, while this is stitching, okay? Talk a little bit about some of the things coming up. Now, to make the edges, and there are these little flange, flanges, these look like they're really hard, but you know what? The way they do them, it's so easy. See all those little squares, okay? So what you do is you take, they have you cut like 10, one and a half by, I think it's seven. Let me get the instructions here. One and a half by seven strips. And I just picked, so like the two end ones are the same colors. And then I just picked one of each one of the other ones, okay? And then what you do is you stitch these together along the long side. So you just put them in there the way you want them in the order. And I put the same, like I had a polka dot on each for the for the number one and number 10. And you just sew them together and then, and then uh, press them down nice, okay? And, oh, hi, Diane. <clears throat> and then this is what it looks like when you get them all stitched together. So those are those one and a half by seven inch strips. But then what you do is you trim them the opposite way, one and a half inch strips. Okay, so, so you can see that I've got them all and then you trim them, see how easy that is? And you trim them to one and a half inch strips across horizontally so that you have one of each little piece, see? And they're all sewn together. And then you take one on, on two of them, we need them to be shorter. Oh, Lynn had to improvise, she said. So um, two of these, when you sewed them together, then we need them to be shorter to put on to the pillow. So take the two end blocks that were the same off the ends. So let me show you on mine what I did. So here's my strips, okay, while this is sewing, here's my strips, okay, and I had, you know, these were all laying here like this, and then I cut them in, I cut them at one and a half inches, okay, and then two of them have the, the that one and ten, you know, it's the same block on each end, so I have these two, and then these two, I took those off, so they're shorter. Does that make sense to everybody? It's real simple. When you look at the instructions, they have really good instructions and lots of pictures. Okay? So this is the two longer ones that'll go along the top and the bottom. And then I think the short ones go on the sides. Let me check the instructions here. So it's just, nope, it's going to do her other leg. Yeah, so, oh, no, you do the top and the bottom with the short ones, and then you do the long ones on the sides, okay? So when we get ready to sew it, you'll see. But this, see how easy that is? 
to get them done. So I just, you just make, cut all those little uh, one and a half by seven, sew them together, and then subdivide those into one and a half inch strips. And you'll show have four of them. And on two of them, take the, the outside rocks off. Okay. So that's the little flange. And it looks so much harder. I remember the first time I saw one of these, I thought, oh my gosh, do I have to sew all those little itty bitty squares together? And you don't, you just, you just sew the little strips together and then trim them down. So it's very simple. Okay. So that is coming up. All right. So it's going up her other leg here. Let's see. I got to get the member to take the, the we're going to be doing the cauldron. So I'm going to go ahead and take my clear vinyl or my clear uh, transfer tape tape off of this to get down to the vinyl like that and of course the, one of the next things we're going to be doing is we're going to put her skirt on so the skirt's really cute I just have to remember to put it right side up I have a hard time with that with those those glitter those little glitter dots I have a hard time with that all right, so let's see. I think we're going to do her little feet next, though. Yes, the, her little feet, and then we'll do her skirt. So I made my pillow also. So this is going to be a square pillow. Now, I like to make my... Um, I like to make my own pillow form. So this is made out of muslin. And the square one I cut... Eight and a half by eight and a half. That's what I cut the fabric. I cut two of them and then I just sew around it with a quarter inch seam, leave an opening, stuff it, and then stitch it shut. And I, you know, I'm not a very good hand stitcher, so it's kind of ugly, but it works. And here's my pillow form. So eight and a half by eight and a half for the square one. And then the little one, the little rectangle one, is going to be you cut it six by ten. Okay. And I'll try to re remind everybody in all the videos which size they are. But I like to make my own because I make a lot of pillow forms. And the ones from Kimberbell are a little bit on the biggish side. Um, so I actually do like um, making my own because I make them just a little smaller and they seem to fit a little bit better. So oh, we're just about done with their legs here. So I think we're going to move on to shoes in a minute. We're going to go back to black. So there's her legs, okay, and then we're going to go to her shoes. So it's going to do the satin stitch over the over her shoes, and then we'll work on the skirt. So I didn't know how I was going to like pre-sew all of this, so I figured we're just going to have to sew it tonight. So you can see, I thought I could pre-sew some of the assembly part, because because I could explain that while this was stitching. Okay. So now it's going to do the little, like the little tabs on the back of her shoes and around the outside edge. Okay, so we've got the little skirt. Like I said, I, you, you're just going to take a needle and thread and sew along about a quarter of an inch in. And then you're just going to draw it up so that the, the, this measurement here is about two inches. Okay, and then you want the glitter out. Just remember that. <laughs> so I have trouble with that. So I got that part done. I think this started out as, um, I think it was 10 inches. Wasn't it 3 by 10? Check the measurement again here. I think it was 3 by 10. 3 by 10. Yes, 3 by 10. So that little piece of glitter. So that'll be, after we get the shoes done here, then we'll work on that. Now, I also did some, um, okay, does anybody have any questions about the flanges? Does that make sense to everybody how I did these? How I sewed the little rectangles together, the one and a half by seven inch rectangles, and then um, trimmed them down so that they were all sewn together. Now they're an inch and a half this way. And then two of them, I took the two outside blocks off. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh, that, and the pictures are real good in the book. 
because I remember the first time I made one of these, and I've even done, um, I've even done these. Um, let's see, I think it was in there was an event. Yes, that brother had, and we never got to do it. We were we were signed up for it, and we didn't have enough people, so they canceled it. And they do there's a, there was a flange pillow in that, and that one was actually pieced in the hoop. That one, that one they did, instead of you sewing them together like they have you do this, they actually pieced the little flanges in the hoop. It was so cool because I'd never done one that way before, and that one was fun. So I did that. I, I did worked on that maybe a couple of months ago, and it turned out so cute. Okay, so I got my, got my topper off my glitter. This is going to be the cauldron. we got to put the skirt on first, though. Get her shoes done. Isn't that cute though with the little glitter dot and the, the orange? Because they did that with the that's the same thing they did with the um with the hat. So here's her hat. So we saw her hat and her shoes match. But I think I had different red fabric. I think my or orange fabric. I think my orange fabric was different. But it's pretty close in color, I think. All right, let's we'll see. What else can we talk about while this is stitching? Um, oh, yeah, we can talk about the back. So we're going to sew the flanges on the front. So that will be part of, the, part of the pillow. But as you notice, with a flange, okay, see how this is loose out here. So what they do is they have you make the pillow is bigger, and then this little flange is out here, and it's soft. So what you do is you sew then, like stitch in the ditch along here, okay, all the way around, and then that makes the smaller pillow part, okay? So, of course, this is going to be an envelope back like most of these have been. And um, when you do that, I've got mine ready over here in a second. Let me see if I can find them. So here's my... my uh, backs for this one so these are i think they were let me check the size on these can't remember what size they were the backs uh let's see where are they back pieces are seven by ten and a half so what i did is on one of the one of the ten and a half inch sides on each one i went ahead and turned it over a quarter of an inch and then another quarter of an inch and made a nice little hem okay uh nance nance that you can get them um okay so a lot of us got kits you this, this is your first week so a lot of us got kits for these um they're called bench buddies from kimberbell and the company we got our kits from is called my girlfriend's quilt shop.com um they're out in logan utah and the gal that owns that shop is the sister to the gal that owns kimberbell their twin sister. So um, so a bunch of us ordered these kits because they were just cute. And then, you know, all the the fabrics and then like all the, the embellishments like that iridescent mylar and, the, you know, the, the glitter vinyl and all that stuff comes together. So it's kind of neat. It's kind of fun to do it that way. My I had to cut a second one, so I had all this stuff in stock at home. But um, it's kind of fun to get the kits because then the fabrics are so cute. Somebody else get it? I went to that site and it's great. Yeah, they do have a lot of... Oh, you like my fabric? Yeah, I, I think that was from last year at um, um no, at uh, Joann's. I got that at Joann's last year, but maybe they still have it this year. And then they had a purple like this too with the, with the plaid. I thought it was kind of cute. The one on the back of the other one, this one wasn't Kimberbell fabric, I don't think either, but it's cute, the orange. So I kind of stayed with the orange thing. And some of these little flange pieces, some of these are Kimberbell fabric, like, um, well, a couple of these are, but here's the purple. I had just a little bit left of that purple. This is um, Kimberbell. This is Kimberbell. But then I think this was from Walmart, and this is from Walmart, and this one's from Joann's, and this one's from Walmart. <laughs> So, and I think this one was from Joann's. So I just had some pieces that I used for my flange pieces. I had some, uh, 
I had some scraps. So, so anyway, I did the little, you know, I flipped it over a quarter of an inch and then, and flipped it again and then just sewed it down. So we got nice, this is our backs and they're nice and hemmed on the edge. Okay. That's the other thing you got to do. We're getting around here. The next part part's really fun because then we get to do this the skirt as long as I get it right side up. This little um, fabric, this background fabric was cute. That is Kimberbell fabric. I had I had extra of that. And most of the kits from my girlfriend's quilt shop were Kimberbell fabrics. There was a few that weren't, but most of them were. And um, they do a nice job, and then it comes with all the extra stuff, so you don't have to like run around all over trying to find, you know, glitter vinyl and all that stuff. So we have all that on the website, but we don't have fabric. So I do order a fair amount of these little kits because I, it just saves me time when I make a bunch of them, and then I can just cut one instead of two. So getting about round her second shoe. See what I did for the next part. I think I left the black in. Yep. Left the black in. Yeah, this, so this one was a hard one to know what to do because I really wanted to see have you see the whole thing. So I thought it would be just better just to show you the whole thing and then um, put we'll we'll put it together. I did some of it ahead of time, but it does take a little bit to do all this satin stitching but I figured we could talk about other stuff so does everybody everybody see where we're going with this so far yep my girlfriend's quilt shop is it's a great shop I do and I've got some I've got the kits ordered for January through March or January through April because I know a lot of you decided you wanted to do those too so okay so we got around the satin stitching. And this is going to be step number 12 in the machine. Step number 12 is going to be the organza placement line. So for her skirt. So I'm just going to leave the black in. This is where you guys have, to, what size hoop am I using? I am using an eight by eight, Cindy. And I know you can't have, you don't have an eight by eight on your machine, but they have a, um, oh yeah, we can, we can talk about that. We'll talk about that in here in a second, Lynn. Um, the eight by eight hoop is what I'm using. So I'm doing it in one piece, but they made, made a part or they made another design. That's two hoopings and a five by seven, Cindy. So you can do that one. Okay. All right. So now it says place the, the prepared organza skirt with the gathered edge, completely covering the placement line, place tape care, completely covering the placement line. So what we're going to do is pull this down. Okay. Yeah, and I'll talk about that in here in a minute, Lynn, okay? Now, I'm going to make sure that I got my organza dots right side up, which I now do. Okay. We're going to put this place that we're going to place this over that placement line. And you want to pull down a little bit so that it covers that line. I'm going to grab me some tape here just a second. And we're going to have to tape this down so we don't catch on that. You know, we don't want to catch that skirt. So let's get this. In fact, it might be easier if I turn it upside down because then I can, it's easier for me to tape this way. So we'll do it this way. All right. So make sure I got my glitter dots up. Make sure I got the glitter dots up. Okay. And then this is the bottom. Okay. So I just turned it upside down just so it'd be easier for me to, to tape this. And I'm going to, make sure that that raw edge of that skirt is over that placement line okay oops i got a little piece sticking out here so we're going to lay that down over the placement line and and it should be about two inches long okay so i'm just kind of holding it there and then i'm going to tape this down over that placement line okay so I'm going to tape it all the way down and then we're going to make sure this is all laying flat and then we're going to put some more tape on here because we don't want to catch your skirt. So we're actually going to tape this over this and tape 
so that we don't catch this with our foot, okay? So there's our little skirt, like that, okay? So we're just gonna tape that down. Okay, now I can turn it right now, because her skirt's, you know, pointing up, because, you know, her head's in the cauldron and her skirt's pointing up. I just had it upside down. Who said they made their, oh, Colleen said she made her little pillow a little bit bigger. Okay, so then I'm going to put this back in. And step number 13 on the machine is going to be the tack down line. So we're going to leave all that tape on there and we're going to just sew this little tack down line that's going to go over the bottom of that. But you want, you want to leave the tape on because you don't want to catch anything. Okay, and I'm turning, I'm on page six in my instructions and I left the black thread in. So now I'm going to go ahead and stitch the cauldron front placement line. So we're going to remove tape from the, the witch tack down line only. So like right here, we're going to take this tape off down here. So the bottom piece I'm going to go ahead and take off now because it's going to go around here. Make sure I leave it on. So do not remove. Oh, it didn't want me to remove the tape. I'm sorry. I need to leave this on yet. Then we take it off after the next step. So we're going to leave this on. So we're going to do a, pl a placement line again for the bottom of the cauldron. So I want to leave your tape on. Sorry about that. Leave the, all the tape on and then we'll then we'll take a piece off after we do this placement line because we don't want to catch that little spot. So this is step number 14 on the machine. Okay, so there's the placement line. And then we're going to remove this bottom tape because we don't want it underneath our cauldron um, glitter. So we want to take this bottom piece of tape off. We're going to leave the rest of it on. I'm just going to pull this bottom one off. So I left it on for the placement line just because we didn't want to catch any of that little string there. Okay. We just got to find the other end here. And then we got to get this little piece off right here. But we don't want this underneath our cauldron. Looks like I still got a little piece of tape. This stuff comes off pretty well, so it's not bad to get off. Okay. All right, so now we got the, the bottom one off. And then it says, that was our placement line. So then it says, place the cauldron front applique glitter sheet, glitter side up, completely covering the line. And then tape that one in place. And I can't remember. I think I I think I did tape this one because see that goes all the way up to here. And I think I did go ahead and tape it because of that stuff underneath. I didn't want it to slide on me. Okay, so let's go ahead and put a little tape on this one. I normally don't, but this one with all that extra bulk under there, I just wanted to hold it down. Okay, and then number fifteen. Um, no, this is this is the Kimberbell paper tape. So if you don't have Kimberbell paper tape, by the way, that this came in the Bella box last time, but they are going to have a um, paper tape dispenser, of uh, an orange one that's going to be coming out. It isn't available yet, but it should be shortly. But this is um, Kimberbell paper tape. It's like um, it's like athletic or like a band aid, you know, paper tape. It's so great and it doesn't leave a residue. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and that number 15 is going to be the tack down line here. And I've still got my black in. And it's going to sew back over that area, you know, where the little skirt is. Across the bottom. And then we're going to trim. And again, it says do not iron it down. So we're not going to iron it again this time. Okay, and then, yeah, so it's going to go around it twice, and then we're going to trim. Yes, there is a new Bella Box coming out on the 14th. So if you haven't ever had a Bella Box, go buy the new one. It looks like it's going to be a holiday one. I think it's going to be cool, so. Oh, I just made my machine mad. All right, so let's pull this out. Take the tape off, and then we're going to trim this one. We're going to trim it close to the stitches all the way around. 
Okay. And again, we're not going to, we're not going to, they didn't have you iron this down because it made it kind of like um, puffy or something. And I think it's also because you got that mylar in there. So you don't want to touch the mylar with any heat. Otherwise it'll, um, okay, now be careful when you're trimming down under here that you don't trim through your skirt. Okay. So just be careful when you're trimming up here that you don't trim through your skirt. Where do you get the Bella box? You get the Bella box from Kimberbell.com. They will be available as of, I think, is it Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, whatever the 14th is. I think it's Thursday. Okay. So that was step number 23. We just trimmed this. Okay. And then the last, I'm going to leave the, uh, I'm going to pull some of this tape up so I don't get it stuck in here. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the, um, the satin stitching along the outside edge, but I am going to pull a little bit of this tape up so that I don't get it stuck under there. Okay. So let's pull this up. I'll just pull it up this way, but I want to leave my, my skirt covered up so it doesn't get caught. There we go. I think we should be okay. This one here, I'm just going to flip it back a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now we're ready for the last satin stitching on the cauldron. It's going to do the little handles too. And this is step number 16. All right, let's see. Yep, then we're ready for, we're going to be ready for trimming. So I'll get my table ready for trimming. Now, it might be a little dark over here when I go to trim. I'm sorry. So hopefully you'll be able to see okay. I'll move a lamp maybe a little bit. Yep, so Kimberbell.com. Okay, so um, Lynn suggested, so for those of you who have never taken a an event um, with Kimberbell, we're going to be doing an event on October 22nd and 23rd. I put a little post up a couple days ago about the sewing with my Nomi's. And oh my gosh, the designs are so cute. And I've never, these have been my favorite ones, I think. Um, they are sewing and more garden related. There are a few little gnomes, but most of it is sewing related and um, garden related. And there's going to be a, um, a sewing caddy with a pin cushion. That's two of the projects. And then another project is going to be the, um, let's see, is the uh, needle case. And then there's an apron. And what's the last thing? Oh, and a tote bag with the little gnomes on it. Is the event recorded? Yes, it is, Cindy. So you can do, you can go to shieldsewingcenter.com and under shop and class registration, you can register for that. It's two days online. Um, and then I can ship the kits to you. If you're further away, I can ship kits to you. And we are going to do that um, September or October 22nd and 23rd. It's a Friday and a Saturday. And yes, we will record both days, the whole time. So if you can't be there the whole time, I'll have the whole thing recorded. But they're just adorable projects. And I put the pictures of the projects up on the group. So go take a look at those pictures. All right. So now it's going to start going around the outside edge. Got our handles. Get ready to do some trimming over here. Do you want to, you want me to show you, should I show you the uh, projects while we're stitching here? I can grab them real quick. They're close. This is stitching. We can look at the little projects. These are so cute. I had a really, really good time making these. Okay, so here's the apron. Hold this up here. Actually, let me do this. Well, this is stitching. Let me switch the camera here real quick, and I'll hold them up for you. That's why I like 
StreamYard, I can switch cameras. <laughs> and I can switch microphones. All right, so here's the apron. This is the apron. And it's got one of those little um, pockets on. It's like a little garden apron. It's not a real big apron, but it's like a garden one. And this is like three-dimensional flower on the top. And then you make the pocket, and then you put it on the apron, and then you there's the tie. But I just thought that was adorable. And you actually make three projects out of one towel. So this is one towel, and you make three projects out of it. It's so cool. So that's the apron. And then this is the sewing caddy. And this is actually two projects. Okay. So this is the sew. You make this out of the towel. And then look at the little gnome and see his little, his little glasses are this. You get a pair of scissors in the kit. And you get a little, and see the little, um, the little snail down here. You get a tape measure. And that's his little the little shell and then his little glasses though are the scissors here so these just come out of his little nose and you make a little pocket and that's the sewing caddy part and then you also make this adorable pin cushion that attaches together and then you get the little clover clips and then so you can see that they were put together with buttons so you'd sew them together with these buttons so that's one of the projects that's actually like a little bench buddy pillow and then here's the other part of the towel so there's three pieces of the towel that you use for the projects so that's the sewing caddy and then this is the needle case here's the needle case and i put a little um snap on mine so that it would close but this is a needle case with a little hedgehog okay and then Last but not least is the tote bag. And this, this is actually on my clock. I have a clock with this on it. So it has the little tote bag with the little gnomes on it. Sewing with my gnomies, it says. So that's the other project. So these are so fun. So if you haven't signed up, there's still room. So please go sign up on shieldsewingcenter.com. It is complete, like I said, we'll record both days. So if you if you can't be there, you know, one of the days or something, you can sure join us one day and watch the video for the other because we're going to record it live. And that way it's just like you're there. But that is sewing with my gnomies. And I can't wait to see Lynn, Lynn's been working on the um, bonus. There's bonus designs, too, and she's been working on those. I didn't I didn't have time. So she's been working on those. And. Uh, we're ready for that on the 22nd and 23rd of October. And you get all of the fabric, you know, all of the embellishments. The only thing you need to have of your own is some thread and your stabilizer. Okay. So that is sewing with my gnomies. All right. We're making progress here. We're getting around the bottom part of the cauldron here. So I'm going to turn this back over, my camera back over in a second. So you can see what it's doing. It's about done. Let's switch the microphone. Okay, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I just, it, they were so much fun to do. And then Kimberbell Club is on the 20th. And it's got um, this darling, I don't know if you can see it up there. Let me see if I tip this up, you might be able to see it. I've got them hanging behind the below the clock over there. Can you see the little the little uh, they're like little freestanding ornaments? Those are the Kimberbell Club projects for um, for the twentieth. So I got those done this week. They were front. Oh, see how it's sewing over the little skirt a little bit more. I'm making progress. This is the last little bit. This one just takes a little bit longer. I, I wanted, but I wanted to see, have to show you all these little techniques because there's a bunch of little things you had to do on this one with the mylar and the little skirt. And but it's so cool. They really got that skirt sewn down in there nicely. So 
just a little bit left. And then we'll trim it. You wake up my iron over here. Get my sewing stuff ready. I think we just got just a few inches yet. Yep, little corner and then it's done. Yay. Okay. So there's our cauldron. And I think we're done. All right, so I'm going to pull this out and we're going to take this tape off. Whoop. Okay. So there's your little skirt. Isn't it cute? And it's all nicely sewn down in there so you don't have to worry. I don't understand your comment, Lynn. Read to trim. I don't quite understand that. All right. So the next step is going to be we're going to take this out of the hoop and we're going to take it over here and I'll show you how to trim it. We're getting ready to put this together. Let me take this over here and I'm going to move the camera real quick. Easiest thing is just to lay everything on the floor <laughs> behind me. So I'm going to move this camera over so you can see the cutting table. We're going to trim it. If I can get it loose again. I'm very good at getting them tight. All right, so I'll move it over here. probably seeing something very strange right now but I'll move the camera in a second okay all right let's pull this up so hopefully you can see over here okay it's a little dark I'll turn this so I can see it just a little bit ready okay so what I'm going to do first okay I'm going to lay this over here on my mat, and I, I like to leave the stabilizer on when I trim these because otherwise things just don't lay very flat for me. So I'm going to bring this over here on my ironing mat first. You probably can't see that, but I'm just going to iron this the edge of this down so it's nice and flat on the edges. Because after it's been hooped, it's all messy on the edges. Okay, and be very careful when you're ironing around these... You know, all this glitter vinyl, okay? We've got a lot of glitter vinyl. Okay, so now the next step it says, we've got, got our orange pop ruler, and this is the, I think it's the eight and a half by eight and a half. So let me get this page turned on here. Yep, so visually center the embroidered design using the eight and a half by eight and a half orange pop ruler. Place the ruler with the cauldron on the bottom edge. So the bottom edge is going to be the cauldron, okay? So in other words, we're going to move this up a little bit. And we're going to put the cauldron right on the bottom edge of the inside of this ruler, okay? Right here, okay? So hopefully you can see me, okay? I have to look back to look to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to get this in there. I'm going to visually center it. That it looks good, but I want my cauldron right down here on the bottom. And I'm, I'm just going to leave just a teeny little space so that I can get my blade in there. Okay. I'm also using my roundabout, my turning mat here, so that it's easier to do this. All right. So let's get this centered in here. That looks pretty good. What do you think? That look okay? Turn it towards me a little bit so I can see here. I think that looks pretty good. Okay. Make sure I'm not too crooked. You can kind of tell if you're crooked or not by using the bottom of your cauldron to help you line it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my rotary cutter and we're going to trim this. Now, you don't have to trim these you remember you trim on the inside of the ruler but if it, if you have a trouble trouble doing that and push this up a little bit you can always take your your marker marking pen and mark the inside now i like to just trim with these okay my bottom is a little crooked here just a second 
trying to get the bottom a little straighter. There we go. Okay. All right. So now I like, like I said, I like to leave just a little space in there so I can just run my blade right along the bottom of that vinyl. All right. So I'm going to run inside here. Just carefully push across. Take your time when you're using these rulers because after you get the hang of it, I like to kind of start out in in a little bit and then I push back into the corner. But just just take your time. I'm quite deliberate when I do this because it took me a while to get used to cutting on the inside of the ruler. It just feels funny because we're all used to cutting on the outside. Okay, so I spread my fingers apart. There's little rubber grippers on these too. All right. So that's eight and a half by eight and a half we cut it. See how I, ooh, I even got it to cut all the way through. Look at there. All right. So there is, and remember, we used tear away. So I'm going to go ahead and tear away now my, my stabilizer off the back. I like to do use tear away because I find that it, um, the cutaway just, I don't know, it looks wrinkly or something always for me. And I'm not going to take all the stabilizer off. I'll just leave it inside some of it, but I'm just going to pull off as much as I can. Then it's a little more supple. It seems like it goes over the pillow nicer. Okay, pull this off. All right, and I'm just going to leave it inside the cauldron. That's fine. Okay, it looks good. Okay, so there is our little witch. And I even got managed to get my glitter on right side up. So there's her little, there's her little skirt. Okay. So now let me switch the camera back and we'll do it. We'll do a little sewing. We'll put this together. Now what they tell you to do, of course, we did already did the flanges. We talked about the flanges. So give me a second here. I'm going to push this back. Put my camera back over here. I do a lot of moving. It's easier to move than have two cameras as close together. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over and we're going to do a little sewing. We're about done. It doesn't take long to do this part. So we already talked about the flanges and how I made them. So let's just stitch them on. Okay, so give me a second here. I'm going to find my black thread. And I like to use um, cotton thread when I do these. So I've got black Pima cotton thread that I'm going to put in the machine. For sewing and we'll switch our foot over okay i'm just going to put my regular j foot on and oops for this okay and we already talked about how i made my flanges so we're just going to put the flanges on to the little pillow okay and I got to turn my page. So we got that. We talked about how to make them. Now we're going to put them on. Okay. So what we're going to do first is those two that we took the, you know, that corner block off of, we're going to put those on the top and the bottom. Okay. So let me get my thread. Oops. Where'd it go? Here it is. All right. And I'll put the machine into sewing mode here. Okay. All right, so we got that. Now I'll put my bobbin in, take my embroidery bobbin thread out and put my cotton thread in there. All right. All right. So then what we're going to do is we've got our little flanges. Now, the one thing, if you notice here in the picture, they kind of inverted, re reverse them. So like put the top one on and then kind of like flip it over on the bottom because then it kind of keeps the, the colors mixed up. So that's what they did. So I'm going to take my little, my little top here. Grab a little, I've got my pins here. Okay. So we'll, I'll just pick aside for it to go on it doesn't matter and then i'll just do the other one the opposite so we're going to do the the um top flange 
I must be a little off on mine, so hopefully they fit. I am not the best cutter, so sometimes I have trouble with things fitting. <laughs> so I apologize, everybody, if it doesn't fit quite right. <laughs> Still got that bug bothering me. All right, get that on there. Looks like I'll be okay. I think we'll be all right. Do that one. So look, we're going to stitch this and we're going to stitch at a quarter inch seam. So I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my little tab a little closer. I'm going to use Q02 for my quarter inch seam. So I've got my J foot on and I'm done using Q02. So it's going to flip my needle over to the right hand side and it'll give me my quarter inch seam. So I'm going to run this along the top here. I'm going to tie it off. Now I, I have those special little pins. We've talked about pins lots of times. We'll talk about them again. Do not sew over your general pins. I only use these teeny tiny little skinny pins called magic pins. Those are okay. They'll be fine. If you sew over them slowly, watch where you're going. I don't like to take them out because I everything scoots on me. All right, so we're going to use this one very slowly. But these magic pins are extremely skinny little pins. All right, so we got that. Top one. Looks like I got a little pucker. I always get a little pucker in something. I can fix it. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing on the bottom, but we're going to invert the bottom one, flip it the other direction so that, so here's the top one, okay, and then this one, I want the purple on this side, so like the purple's over here, I want the purple on the, bot on the other side, on the bottom, so we'll do that. All right. Do this one and do the same thing. Quarter inch seam. See if I can get this lined up here. Oh, that I think I got him. That gnat's been trying to bite me all after all evening. He just likes me, I guess. All right, let's get these on there. I like to kind of pin where the little, you know, the little intersections are. There we go. And then we're going to sew across the bottom of this one. Just be careful of your glitter vinyl. It's a little hard to pin. I try to not pin, get into that glitter vinyl if I, unless I have to. All right, so do my quarter inch seam on this one. I'm going to go across the bottom. Watch your pins, go over them slowly. All right, then we're going to tie off on the end. But like those, you know, those great big um, yellow headed like quilting pins, do not sew over those. You'll hit them every time and then you knock the timing off on your machine. That's, these are the only pins, these little skinny and they're so thin. Okay, all right, so there's the bottom one, okay? Wake my, wake my iron up back here again, okay? And I'm gonna just gonna, I'm just gonna um, iron these down real quick over here. Yep, Jan, you don't have to. I just am lazy and I don't like to take them out, but I also use very, very specific pins. So I never sew over. Now you have to be careful when you go to do this flange, don't put your iron right on your glitter bunt. So I'm just kind of doing the edge and you're going to kind of have to finger press it a little bit like in the center here, okay? Don't put your don't put your iron over your glitter vinyl. Okay? So there we got the top one, see? That looks good. Okay? 
Now we're going to do the same thing. With, we're going to do the same thing with the sides, but we're going to use the longer ones that we had left those on. And it doesn't matter. We're going to do them the same way. We're going to invert them. Okay. And I'm going to line up my little seams on the corners there. Then I've got those nested right there in the, in the corner. Put the pins in here. And then do the other side. And this one, I think I'm going to turn down this, this. I'm going to turn this seam so that they nest. So I'm just going to turn this seam down the other way on the flange so that they nest. Because otherwise, it's hard to get my seam lined up. Do that. That looks better. Oops. I think I did better with these. I am not the greatest cutter in the world. So when I have these little teeny squares, sometimes I have a little problem getting things to line up. <laughs> All right, so let's get that lined up and pinned. My one little square is going to hang out a little bit over the edge here, but that's okay. I don't think you'll notice it. All right, so I'm going to get these pinned in here. See, I did better with this one. I don't know why I had trouble with the other ones. All right, so we're going to sew this one on. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to kind of invert them so that the lead, the, num the colors are different. So I'm pretty sure that's how they did it. I was just looking. Yep, that's how they did it. Okay, sew down this one. We're going to do our quarter-inch seam again using Q02. All right. And you can see I'm not going over. I am going over the pins, but not very fast. So don't try that with any other pins but these little skinny, skinny, skinny ones. Okay, we're just about down there. Oops, I just stabbed myself again. These pins are also extremely sharp. I stab myself a lot. All right, I'm going to tie off at the bottom. And we'll do the other side, but we're going to, again, we're going to invert those. Okay, so there's that one. That looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to invert them. Except I think I probably should have done a different way. See, I got two of these blocks together, but you know what? It's okay. I can always take it off before I finish it if I want to. So this one is like this. So yeah, I think one of them ended up being that way, but I don't remember. Did mine end up being that way? No, I must have not have inverted it. So what I should have done is I should have probably put the purple up here, right? You may have to rip, guys. Sorry. Let's put this one on because this one looks better. You may have to rip. Okay, I'm going to invert this block again. I used different fabric this time, so my fabrics was a little different. So I didn't catch that. All right, so we'll get this one on. I may have to flip the other one over. I don't want to put it back together if I don't like it. All right, so what time is it getting to be? I don't want to keep you too long. We're about 7.30, so let me let me get this on here. We'll get the top done, and then I might have to rip before I finish it, and I can finish it and take a picture, okay? And we'll talk through the rest of it. So let's get this on so you can see, but I think I'm going to like it better if I take this off because I don't like these two colors together in the corner, so I just need to flip it over. It's like, whoops, only on live camera everybody okay but i can finish it up and then i'll take a picture all right so let's get this one on then i know i've got the other one we can fix it the hardest thing with this table that i'm sitting on it's hard for me to get to the foot controller because there's a bar across the bottom of my table all right so we're going to go across we're doing our quarter inch seam Q02. Okay, I think I'm a little 
pull off. Whoops, there goes my facts. I don't think I lost them on the floor, though. I always get puckers and everything. There we go. All right, so there's that one. Okay. So here is our whole top. Like I said, I might rip that one off because I don't like that those colors matching. So I need to flip it over. Okay. So there's this one. So I'm gonna take this one off and flip it over, and then I'll take a I'll take a picture. So what you do now, okay? So at, we're at the point that I would iron this out. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna um, not gonna completely finish it tonight. So I'll just take a picture when I'm done. I'll do it after a while. Um, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your backs, okay? And you're gonna overlap. Press these out first. Then we're gonna overlap these. Okay, and we're going to put them, sorry, we have, this is the ones we have to do, um, they do it, no, they do do it this way, okay, have to, have to see, some of these they do differently, so we're going to take these, put the right sides together, and you're going to, again, overlap these, and they're, and they're going to have your envelope back, you can either overlap them up and down, or sideways, whichever way you like. I like them up and down. So it just depends on what you want, okay? Then you're going to sew all the way around, okay? Then you're going to turn it right side out and press along that flange so it's nice and beautiful. Let me grab my other pillow. So it's nice and beautiful and, and nice and flat all along the edge, okay? Then, before you finish, you're actually going to lay it flat, and you're going to take matching thread, and I had to change my thread down here because it was black, okay? You're going to stitch in the ditch. You're just going to stitch right along that seam line all the way around the gray section, and then when I got down to the black, I switched over to black, okay, down there by the cauldron, because it, otherwise it showed. I didn't like that. So I made black, I made it black here and I made it gray here. Okay. And that's how you make the flange. Okay. And then the, the pillow goes into the center. All right. Does that make sense? So I got to fix this before I finish this one up. I want to, I want to, I'm going to flip this over. I need to go with it because it's, it's not, it's not right. <laughs> I have to flip it over before I put it together. All right. So then um, it tells you actually to sew, before you put the back on, it tells you to sew on your little buttons. And that's what I did is I actually sewed them on before I put the back on because it was a little easier. And I did sew these on. You can sew them on with the sewing machine, but I did sew them by hand. So you can see there's a whole bunch of little buttons that they have you put on like bubbles. They're like the bubbles for the cauldron. Okay. So you just put them on. And I just looked at the picture and kind of put them on where I thought they looked good. Okay, and I did stitch those on before I put the back on just because then it was all open. It was easier to get them on. Okay, so that's the other little embellishment we put on is these little buttons. And I'm going to use um, some of the cute, the um, cute as a button ones. I'm going to use these this time. I've got the cute as a button ones that have like little polka dots and stuff on them. So these, these lime green ones, I'm going to use that. Okay. All right. So yeah, so I'll I'll take a picture when I get this done. It'll take me an hour or so after I have to we have to have supper first. And then I will um, finish this up and then I'll take a picture of it when it's all done. Okay. But I need to take this one off and just I need to literally flip it over this way because I just put it on the wrong direction. Because I don't want those those uh, blocks to meet in the corner. Okay. So this so yeah, so right at this point, put your buttons on first, sew the back on. Turn it right side out, stitch it around the outside edge, and then you're going to stitch in the ditch right along here. I, I stitched from here around to here with the gray, and then I just put black in here. And that's make that's what makes that flange on the back. You can see I had the black at the bottom. Okay, and that makes the flange, and then the pillow goes into this little pocket right here. Okay. All right, does that make sense to everybody to finish it? And I'll take a picture after a while and put it up for you. Okay, 
since we're running a little late, we want to get done. All right. So next week will be, yes, the, the buttons are from Kimberbell. Yeah, they're the, the cute as a button set and that you get. There's two different sets. There's eight different colors. They're really cute. I have all of the colors that I use them quite a bit. So, yep, those are from Kimberbell. Um, okay, so next week we will have a software class. Okay, and we're going to do that new little program called um, uh, Design Database Transfer. So um, I put the, the um, I'll put them up again so you can see them or I'll move the post up. But I put up the um, links to those software programs. So if you have a baby lock machine that is wireless um, or a brother machine that is wireless, that means Luminaire, the new 3700D, the PR1055 and the new six needle, this program will send your designs from your computer wirelessly to your machine. But it is also a great little program to help you with um, like categorizing your and looking at your designs. So even if you don't have a wireless machine, you can still use it for that purpose. You just can't send your designs directly to your machine with it. But it is a cool little program and it's free. OK, so I'll move that up in the in the um, in the feed so you can find those links so you can go download it if you don't have it. It's very, very similar to PE design design database. So if you have an older machine, you if you and if you have PE design, you can just watch the class and you can use your older PE design da design database, too. OK. All right. So everybody, and let me let me switch the camera here real quick and we'll say goodbye. And then we will finish up. I'll take a picture of this in, in an hour or so and put it back up for you. So, all right, let me get to my camera and my microphone. And so everybody, if you have any questions, let me know if you, if you can't figure out how to finish this up. So Jan got hers on backwards, you know, so I have to fix it. So I don't like that when, it, when it's, the two colors are together, we'll fix it. Okay. All right. So you have a good week. And we'll see you next week for a little um, for a little software, and then I will finish this up and show up show you a picture of it. So thanks everybody. Have a good evening.